The U.S. Navy currently has the most powerful, silent, and sophisticated submarines on the planet. However, during the days of the Cold War, Russia had titanium submarines that could dive quite deep and made Washington quite nervous. Military technology is often the result of strategic interactions between world powers and their economies. The Project 705 Lira nuclear submarine is a great example of that dynamic. Indeed, the Lira is both the product and the cause of this interaction. After World War II, the United States jumped out in front of the Soviet Union in submarine technology. By the end of the war, the USSR had acquired many of the most advanced German submarine types, but the United States had gained invaluable submarine and anti-submarine experience during the Pacific War and the Battle of the Atlantic. This experience, combined with existing technological advantages, gave the United States a strategic advantage in submarine warfare. The Soviet Union's early nuclear submarines were known to be less stealthy and reliable than Western submarines. The Soviet Navy was aware of its strategic disadvantage in submarine warfare and was unable to compete in the areas of stealth and reliability. Therefore, they sought to innovate. Moscow required a submarine that was faster and could dive deeper than Western submarines. To accomplish this, the Soviets would design the Lyra class. With its titanium hull and unique reactor, the Lyra would be the fastest and deepest diving submarine in the ocean, so fast that it could evade Western torpedoes. Titanium allows for thinner, lighter surfaces with the same strength as steel, meaning a titanium hull can withstand greater pressure and allow for deeper dives. However, titanium is also three to five times more expensive than steel, and it is an extremely difficult material to work with. Manipulating large titanium panels for hull sections is especially hard. Failures in the welding process, for example, can lead to the titanium becoming embrittled, lowering its strength. Furthermore, as the construction of the Lyra-class submarines demonstrated, titanium requires welders to work in hermetically sealed warehouses full of argon gas, which adds to the expense. The titanium hull was a necessary component of the Soviet Union's innovation strategy. Reactors take up space in a submarine. The Lyra's designers sought to reduce the space required for the submarine's interior, thereby allowing for higher speeds. In the case of the Lyra, the solution was to use a liquefied lead bismuth mixture to cool the reactors, reducing the size of the submarine's reactors and therefore increasing its speed. The Soviets found out that the reactor had difficulties. It is imperative that the engine is constantly heated, or else the liquefied metal coolant will solidify. However, as was the case with the titanium hull, the reactor was essential for fulfilling Soviet needs. Both were essential components of the Soviet Union's attempts to achieve either strategic parity or a strategic advantage through innovation in submarine warfare. The Lyra indeed proved to be very fast and able to dive quite deep. It was, in fact, the fastest and deepest diving submarine ever produced, able to cruise at 41 knots when submerged and able to dive as deep as 1,148 feet. It was out of range of other anti-submarine weapons because of its speed and depth. The Lyra could even loiter beneath a NATO submarine and fire torpedoes over its head. It is obvious that the possibility of the Lyra patrolling the seas would upset the existing strategic balance between NATO forces and the USSR, benefiting the latter. Upon learning of the Lyra's capabilities, the US and British navies rushed to build weapons that could target the submarine. The American Mark 48 ADCAP torpedo was said to reach a speed of 63 knots. The British developed a similar torpedo named Spearfish. The U.S. also pursued the Sea Lance supersonic missile program, which would deliver a torpedo or nuclear depth charge at ranges of up to 100 miles. It is now well known that the Soviet Union ended up producing only seven Project 705 Lira submarines, that some of them did experience cracking in the hull, and that making repairs proved difficult, as the aforementioned coolant in the reactors had to stay heated at all times to remain liquefied. The submarine also turned out to be especially noisy, making the vessel easy to detect. Most of the Lyra were decommissioned and scrapped at the end of the Cold War in the early 1990s. They were too expensive to operate. Yet what the currency crisis proves is that innovation in military technology is often part of an ongoing competitive process to maintain strategic advantage in discrete areas. 
The lira was both the outcome and the cause of such a process, regardless of its ultimate use or lifespan.